get this from Dick Blick. They're super affordable if you buy, I, I knew what you meant, Kim. These canvases are super affordable if you buy in bulk. Thank you, Joanne. So if you buy three or more, they're comparable to the prices and um, at Michael's for these thicker canvases. So don't be afraid to go do that. And a lot of times they'll have free shipping over like $49. So make sure you check out Dick Blick. They have some great sizes and canvases as well, especially the six by 12, which is really great for the holidays. It's a good uh, Christmas tree size. It's a good cross size. It's a good angel size. It's a really good size to work with. Okay, so I went ahead and created my little tracer. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start with our background and I'm gonna try to make a night sky. I don't know, can we see the back of the canvas? It is splined. So it's a one and a half inch splined. Those are the ones I like best because I feel like they are tighter for some reason. But if you buy a canvas and you don't feel like it's tight in the center, thank you, Elaine. You can spritz these with water on the inside and let that dry and it'll tighten that um, canvas up a little bit. You might have to do it more than once if it's super loose, but um, that should do the trick. So anyway, I am gonna try to do a night sky. I'm gonna use some, a little bit of black and some dark blues and try to do a little bit of a night sky with a little bit of that circular lighter color in the manger area, which is gonna be, you know, closer to the bottom, but we're just going to go for it. I don't know if I'm going to, if it's going to work out for me. I don't know if it's going to be a disaster, but we are going to go for the gusto. Let me try to find me a plate real quick. It's not covered with paint. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here's one. Uh-oh. No, that's not one. Hang on, guys. You're prepared. Okay, I'm just going to use this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Hey, Catherine, I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to get some blue. And normally I start with white, so y'all don't freak out, but we are going to start with some blue and I'm going to start with the sides. Yes, the velvet pumpkin was spectacular. Uh, I'm going to start with my sides and just get those done. And we are, does that water trick work on thighs? Oh. <laughs> I wish. That would be nice if it did, wouldn't it? Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my sides and you and um, get those done. And then we're going to work on the top because I want to work wet on wet. And I'm going to start with, I have two blues. One is Prussian and one is Deep Midnight. The Prussian blue is a little bit of a brighter color. Um, we're also going to spatter some white too, so stay tuned for that. The Prussian blue is a little brighter, so I think I'm going to start with the Midnight. Right? I would spritz them all day. I'd be walking around with a water bottle. I got some thumb to thighs. So I'm going to put a little bit of this Deep Midnight Blue on. Let me grab a brush, and we are going to... Just get some paint on the sides. <laughs> it didn't work on Richard's hiney, he said, and left scorch marks. <laughs> Richard, you, I have missed you. You cracked me up so much. I'm just gonna go ahead and get some of this blue on the sides of my canvas. And normally I don't paint the sides too often, but because we're going with a dark color on the front, we're gonna go ahead and get that done. So this is kind of boring, but bear with me. We're gonna to get to the good part as fast as possible. Very quickly. So, just get our sides done. While I'm doing the sides, y'all can go invite all your friends to come hang out. I don't have, it's not a wine Wednesday. I wish it was, but for some reason, I don't have any wine. <laughs> All right, there's one edge. I'm gonna just smooth it out a little. 
And then we'll do the top. Yes, this is my favorite dark blue color. I use it a lot. And it's got really good coverage too, especially for putting a dark color on white. It really has excellent coverage. So let's do this side. And we're gonna get to the good part. So what I'm gonna do, remember when, try to, I don't remember if I did this on, I think I did this particular um, style on my Shattered Circle membership site where we did, oh, cause it was the um, Christmas tree where we swirled some lighter colors in circles. So I think we're gonna try that a little bit right in the manger area to lighten up that center area so that we'll be able to see baby Jesus. Almost done, guys. Almost. Then we're going to work right on the front. We're going to just hopefully not make a mess. Hopefully it will work out. Okay, so I'm going to lay it down. Let me see, let's get it where you can see it. I wanna make sure you can see it all. I'm gonna get a little bit more of, hey, Billy. I'm gonna get some of this Prussian blue as well. Oh, good, good heavens. See what I did there? I didn't shake that up and that is all oil. I'm gonna soak some of that up. That doesn't have any color in it. So let's shake it up. Make the mess. Hey, Michelle. So let's try that again. Make sure you shake your colors. That's a great blue. And I'm gonna put some more of this midnight. Hey, hey, my little Cajun friend. Hello, Louisiana. Thank you, Sherry. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, I'm just gonna grab some of this Prussian blue and check it out. And I'm gonna, well, before I get started, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to my palette as well so that we can get right into that when it's time. I'm gonna kind of go back and forth with my two blues. And I'm gonna work kind of quick because I do want, I'm gonna hit my edges first, the outside edges. I do want uh, to work wet on wet. So I'm gonna try to get should have just left an area for snow, but that's okay. It'll be all right. I do want to work wet on wet. I do want to get that uh, those edges done. So I'm just going a little bit back and forth with my colors. So it's a not all one solid color blue. So I'm going in the Prussian, and then I'm going in the Deep Midnight, and just wiggling, squishing it around, moving it around. Hey, Brandon, and hello, Little Rock, Mississippi. I've never heard of Little Rock, Mississippi. Whereabouts is that? So, okay, so I wanna work wet on wet, and I've got most of my canvas covered, all right? So now I think I'm gonna add a little bit more right in the middle where I want to start my swirling. So I'm gonna offload. I'm just gonna wipe some of that blue off my brush. I'm not gonna clean it, okay? I'm gonna scoochie this over just a smidge. I'm not gonna clean it, but I'm gonna go into my white. I'm gonna blend it into that blue that's on my brush. Just kind of go back and forth. And I'm gonna start, let's see, about right here, right in my manger area, and I'm just gonna Start making a little swirl. I'm gonna offload again. Get a little bit of white and I'm just going to make some little circles. You could add in another color too if you wanted. 
a lighter blue, a yellow, a gold, whatever color you want. And I'm gonna come up a little. And kind of swirl some of that in. Oops, hang on, I made a mess on the side. I guess what I just need to do is make a mess on the other side too. So they're equally messy. We'll just add a little paint. Voila. All right, I am gonna, I'm gonna offload again, get that excess blue off my brush. I'm gonna come in with that white. And I'm just gonna pop in, I wanted, I meant to leave like some snow. So I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of white over my blue at the bottom and we'll hit that again in a minute. Okay, so what I wanna do real quick is get this dry, it's right here. I'm gonna get this dry really quick and then we're gonna spatter and then we're gonna do our manger. So let's get it dry. What do y'all think so far? We could actually, I wanna try something else. Hang on. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my palette. Y'all don't kill me. No, I guess I'm not even supposed to say that. I get in trouble. I'm gonna get a little bit of black. Oh my goodness. just smatter a little bit of that black in with our blue. It kind of gives it a little interesting night sky. Just a little bit of darkness. I kind of like that. Kind of digging it. So we're going to add, I'm going to get a little bit of black on my tips as well and come in and maybe add a, just a few swirls of black too. Let's get her dry. Hey, Linda. We're gonna get this dry and then we're gonna actually do a little spatter technique with a toothbrush. You'll see how much white paint I can spatter all over the place. Cause that's how it rolls. Oh, it really looks good dry. All right. So what I'm going to do is grab another plate. We need a clean plate. I don't have one, but this is all this is all dried up. I try to use my plates like a hundred times before I throw them away because you know, waste not, want not. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white. Oh, thank you, that'll be better. Thank you, love. I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my plate and I'm gonna add a little water. I have a mister, so I'm just gonna use that. Hey, Pam. Hey, Diana. I'm just gonna add a little bit of paint to, uh-oh, where's my toothbrush? Oh, here it is. This is not the one I brush my teeth with, y'all. I'm just gonna swirl that paint and water together just so it's a loose, watery mix. You want it to still have opacity. You wanna still see the white. Let me show you, kinda. You wanna still be able to see that it's white, so not too much water. So you're gonna saturate your bristles of your toothbrush. Now I'm gonna pop it on the side of my plate so that I get any loose, big old, great big drips off. And I'm actually going to do a test right here on my plate. I'm gonna stand up so I don't get it all over me. And that's good, all right. So now I'm gonna put my toothbrush the bristles straight down, and I'm gonna run my finger across those bristles. I'm about um, eight to 10 inches higher than my canvas. The closer you are, the bigger your spatters are gonna be. So I want small spatters. 
I can't, that's a tongue twister. So I'm gonna raise my brush up a little bit. And we have stars, snow, stars, whatever you wanna call it. Oh, almost sat on the floor, y'all. Okay, let me show you that close up. So that is what that's gonna look like. Super fun, super fun. So I'm gonna set this plate aside so I don't make a mess. And now we can, I'm gonna dry this again because we don't wanna trace our pattern over the top of this while this is wet. Um, uh, so I'm gonna dry this so we can't, so we don't smear our dots. Alright, so let's get it dry. While I'm drying the top, I think I'm gonna grab my brush. Let me grab a small brush. I'm gonna add a little bit more white down here at the bottom. Where our snow is. And then we'll get that dry as well. All right. So get that. I know it's the best job ever, Ella. <laughs> it is the best job ever. Thank you, Susan, for the stars. Girl, trust me, every day when I wake up, I thank the Lord. I feel so blessed. All right, almost done. Okay, so now we are going to trace our um, manger scene onto our canvas, but we can't use black. It's not gonna show up very well if I use my regular old graphite paper. I mean, it'll show up, it'll be a little more difficult uh, to see, but I'm, so I'm gonna use this transfer paper. I have to figure out which side is which. Um, I think this is down, watch this. Yes, so this is like sewing transfer paper, okay? So that you get this at Walmart or any uh, fabric store. I think they have it at Hobby Lobby. It, the transfer paper comes in different colors. Um, so, um, I missed something. Yes, that's exactly why, Denise, I just wanted it really to be kind of like stars. Um, so, and I didn't want to do it on top of the manger or on top of baby Jesus. So this is like transfer paper for sewing, but you can get this transfer graphite paper in all a bunch of different colors. So I'm gonna use it so that I can see my manger really well. And I am going to get it placed where I want it. And I'm going to use some blue tape and just tape it down and kind of make a little hinge on my canvas. Thank you, Vera, if I didn't say thank you. I have used yellow, Barbara. I have pink, I have yellow, I have black, I have blue, I have white. I have all the colors, because you never know what you're gonna need. So I'm gonna stick this under, and I'm just really lightly going to transfer, and this white is used up pretty good. So it might, oops. My, that's a bad uh, stylus. That's the one that kept disappearing on me. Y'all remember that? I kept saying somebody broke in and stole my transfer, my stylus. So let me see if this is working. It is barely working because this graphite paper is um, used up. I've had it forever. I bet I've had it five years. So I'm just gonna make my lines. I'm gonna make my line 
for my star. And I'm gonna take a peek. Yeah, we're doing good. So I'm gonna do I'm trying to find a, a spot that has a little bit more. I'm gonna try the black. It's not showing up really, 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 really well. So let's see what happens. If I can see the black underneath. Let's try it. So this is the manger. Let me take a peek. Oh, I can see it. Okay, so then we're gonna have his little bed. His blanket. Okay, perfect. So the black dead uh, show up well. So if you don't have white, the black did show up really well on top of this dark color. So let's pull this off, save that for my people. And you've been breaking bases, Cindy, that's funny. So I'm gonna start with painting out my um, the little um, barn. So I'm going to put traditional burnt umber on my palette. I'm also going to add a little bit of gilded oak, which is kind of a must dark mustardy color. Just a little. And then we have the white. Okay, so I'm going to grab a brush and I'm going to go into, I'm going to get that wet first. I'm going to go into that umber and I'm going to just paint out the roof and the sides of this piece. Okay. Need to go this way a little bit. Yeah, normally I sketch right on my canvas on the plastic. I'll show you in just a second. So I sketch out whatever I'm painting right on the outside of my canvas, you know, and then I trace it with onto my transfer paper. Because honestly, I like doing that because let me tell you a little secret. Um, if you have alcohol wipes or even hand sanitizer, if you sketch on your canvas plastic using a black Sharpie, here's my black Sharpie, you can erase it with hand sanitizer and uh, start over if you make a mistake. So it's just easier for me. I like the, um, I, like, I just like the way it does. It works. It works for me. I'm going to stop right into that snow a little. And you don't want this to look perfect, okay? You want it to be a little bumpy, a little woodsy. I'm going to come in and we'll do this side. Bring it into your snow a little. And while it's wet, I'm going to offload my brush. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of that gilded oak, that mustardy color. I'm just going to spring in a little bit right into the brown. It's just going to give it more of a three-dimensional quality. Just a few little strokes here and there. And then I'm going to offload again. We're going to go into the white and do the same thing. Just a few little strokes of the white. And it gives your uh, manger, or I guess this is the barn, a kind of a woodsy look. So it's not a one dimensional color. So just add a few little strokes here and there. You do one more little bit here and then I'll show it to you close up. 
All right, so here is kind of what that's gonna look like. Now we're gonna do a similar uh, process with our um, manger. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of a smaller brush. I'm gonna go in with the umber and I'm gonna paint in just that little manger. Right, all the way down to your snow. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll add a little bit of the yellow. Offload. We'll grab up a little bit of that white. And we'll do the other side. Offload, pull a little bit of a yellowy color. It doesn't have to be this color. It could be just something, kind of a dark yellow. A little bit of white. All right. Okay, now we're gonna work on the um, hay that, uh, baby Jesus is laying in. So for that, I'm going to use the same brown, but I'm gonna start with a little bit of white on my brush, because we wanna tone it down just a little. I'm gonna dip a little bit of brown, a little bit of white, and make myself a medium brown. And I am going to go right along the top edge of the bedding and then I'm going to just start making like commas. I'm going to go in the dark brown and then white, dark brown, white and just go back and forth. I'm just going to do the whole thing and go back and forth. because you want it to look kind of like hay. Hay, we'll get a little yellow in there. A white. So we're just making that little bed up. So add just little bits of color here and there as needed. So it looks textury, not one solid color. Does that make sense? I'll define that a little more. So then you have the little bit, the little bedding that baby Jesus has, okay? So for his wrap for his blanket. We're going to use a gray color. So this is uh, called Delta Shadow Gray. Any gray. You can do it, Jill. This is kind of like coloring in a coloring book. Oops, that was excessive. That was an excessive amount of gray. I'm going to use the same brush. I'm just going to go into that gray. It's kind of a beigey gray, and I'm going to just paint in his wrap. Make sure you get all the way down. And I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of white on that dirty brush. And just hit the top of it. And the black, teeny, 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 tiny bit. And I'm gonna hit right along the bottom edge to kind of help create like a shadow. So it's three dimensional and not flat. So I'll show you that. Cute. Now for his face, 
I'm going to use, my colors are all over the place, man. Gotta keep them organized so I'll know what to do. This is called Warm Beige. It's a great skin tone color. I'm gonna just put a little dot. I'm gonna rinse that brush. Just paper towels seem better days. We're gonna get, actually, before I do that, I need to do something else real quick before I do that because I'm gonna get some splendid gold, which is a metallic gold. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on my plate. And I'm gonna use a dry brush, okay? This is dry, it has not been in the water. I'm gonna dip it in to my bristles, and then I'm gonna just kind of swirl it around on a clean part of my palette. So it's getting that paint in the bristles, but just a little bit. And right here above baby Jesus's head, I'm gonna just take that gold and I am gonna make a little glow. And while we got this, and you can make it as big or as little as you want, and while we got this dry brush with the gold on it, I'm gonna do it again, swirl it around, and I'm gonna come up here where my star now I'm gonna add just a little line of that muted gold, just barely got any paint on my brush at all. I'm just gonna make a little shadow. We'll come this way too. Very muted. Hardly any paint, guys. You don't want to have a, like a line. All right? So it's just very faint, very faint little halo. Now I can take the warm beige and we'll fill in his sweet little head. Might take more than one coat because we're going over this dark blue. We may hit it with a dryer for one quick second and then do it again. Whoa. Okay, you don't want to paint on hot canvas, so let that cool off a little bit. Go back in and Add another quick coat until it's nice and opaque and you can't see the blue behind it. Okay. I think I need one more, but I'm gonna just show you guys close up. We'll give it a second to dry. This is turning out really cute. Yeah, I'll move it up, I'm sorry. I get focused on my own self and I forget that you guys are watching sometimes. So let's, I'm gonna hit that one quick second. And give it one last coat. And then while that's wet, I'm going to offload, take a tiny bit of white on my brush and go right across the top of the face because that star is shining bright on this face, creating a little bit of a shine, right? I'm gonna come up here, just highlight a little anywhere it needs it. And I think we're done painting, guys. Let me show you this close up. Let me move these paint, these uh, plates out of my way before I make a mesh. Uh, let me show you this. So here is the little ghosting where we're gonna put our glass star or spattering for our little baby stars. Here's our little 
uh, cover, our little baby Jesus, his little glow. So we're gonna do a couple of things now. Let me set this aside. And on uh, for our star, I really wanted, yeah, I'm gonna leave it a little bit um, like this because I am gonna put some starfire glass down here, but I kind of like the effect of the night sky shining blue onto the um, snow. So I'm gonna just kind of leave it, all right? So let me show you what we're gonna do for our star. I have um, these tiny strips of glass that um, I was actually gonna make some little Christmas ornaments out of them, crosses, but I think these are the perfect, they're probably a quarter inch wide, and I think these are gonna be perfect for adding to our canvas for our star. So I'm gonna kind of measure with my fingers. So I need to cut it about right there. So I'm gonna take my little scoring tool. I'm just gonna make a little notch. And, oh, or I didn't, or not. Make a little notch and break that. So that will be my long piece there. So now I need another piece here. So I need two of these to be about that long. So I think I can just cut that in half. And just snap. So that will go there somehow. Then we're gonna do four pieces that are probably about the same length as that. So let's cut. I'm gonna use my tool. And we're gonna cut four more pieces. I actually uh, cut this. Becky, myself, you can buy sheet glass and score and cut your own strips. So I'm gonna make four of these. Four. So I have four of the outsides. This is the two and then this one. I'm actually gonna put a little, I am standing it on its edge, Jan. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of glue right along my line to hold my cross up while I work. So we'll put just a tiny bit of glue. And this is Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue. It dries clear and it dries fast. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna put this back. I'm standing it, there it is flat. And, but if I stand it on its side, it's very three dimensional. So I'm gonna put that right there. Let's make sure it's straight. We don't want it to be crooked. Looks a little crooked to me or like it's leaning maybe. It's not perfectly cut. So we'll put these here. I'm gonna have to stand up and look over it because sitting, it's super hard to tell if it's straight or not. So I'm gonna get it on and then I'll stand up over it. So we'll put these in. I'm gonna stand up and look at it from the top down. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let me show you that. So you can see now that our little cross, super cute. That's not a cross, it's a star. And for the halo, I have uh, this gold glass that I sell in my store. So I am going to just kind of look through here. I'm gonna dump a little bit in my hand and see if I can find a piece that is suitable. This one is perfect. This one is even Nope, 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 hang on. Something that's suitable for a halo for baby Jesus. And I believe that's too big. I believe that might do it. So just a small kind of um, oblong piece of gold. I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of glue here. I do wanna use my pen, I almost forgot. We're gonna put that little bit 
of gold right there for his halo. And I'm gonna use my pen. It's gonna be super hard to see any big details with your graphic pen, but it will show up a little bit. So I'm just gonna use it to outline my stable. I kept saying barn, I don't know what's wrong with me. My, my words aren't uh, working for me great today. So I'm really messily adding um, some lines to the stable. I'm gonna come down here, do the same thing on the manger. Just kind of be messy. It looks better if it's not perfect, in my opinion. I'm gonna make some little swoops inside. I'll show you this in just a second. And then we'll go around his body. I'm gonna make a few little lines there. And come across, all right. So I'm gonna show you his body close up. So you can kind of tell a little bit of the detail from the pen. So there's his body. You can see inside the little uh, bed where you can see those black lines. It just gives it a little more oomph. Okay, so let me make sure that everything is where it needs to be before we move on. Okay, great. So um, I'm gonna add some Starfire, which is just clear glass. Woo -hoo. Whoa, Nelly. It's just clear, no colored glass. I'm gonna add that to the bottom. My messy looks like a kindergartner got lost. Gina, I don't even believe you. So I'm gonna add just a few nuggets of glass to the snow at the bottom, just to give it some more glisten. And then we'll also add some seed beads for a little extra oomph. That's a huge piece of glass. Don't really care for it. I don't know what's going on with this starfire. A little bit more. Here's the canvas size right here. Hang on. Dick Blick. Let's get a few more little pieces. That's too big. I want a little bit of snow, not a blizzard. A little bitty bitty bit. Okay. We'll put the rest in the bag. Hey, Bo. And now we are ready to add resin, guys. So I'm gonna get my gloves. Where did my gloves go? I'm gonna get some gloves. And we're gonna make, oh, I should make 16 ounces because I have a hundred things to, uh, to resin, but gonna make, I think, let me see. I think I'm gonna make an ounce. So I'm gonna do a half an ounce of resin and a half an ounce of hardener. And then I'll let you know for sure how much we used. So let's do a half an ounce of resin and half an ounce, where is it, of hardener. I'm going to make you super nervous by putting it right here on my desk. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. No, thank you. Oh, you guys can keep your snow. All right, I'm going to put my gloves on. We're going to pour our resin. Um, it might, you know, Sherry, they make paint that is specific for glass. I know I've bought some, thank you, Catherine. I've bought some at Michael's before. So see if, if that will, but what you can do is just lay it on one side 
and just mist it with spray paint and let with, with gold spray paint or whatever color you want to use and let that dry really well and that should work really that should work fine so let's do hardener half an ounce in this cup This is going to be way more than we need for this project, but like I said, I'll let you know exactly. And now resin. And when we're done, I'll tell you what it was, and I'll be able to use this on something else. So we'll go here. Woo! Nelly, no! All right, so now I have my mixy cup. And I'm just going to dump the resin into my mixy cup. Add a measuring cup and a mixy cup. <laughs> okay. Get all that stuff out of there. As much as you can. And we'll get this. And we're going to mix both parts together in one cup. We're going to stir and blend really nice and gently for three minutes so that we make sure everything's mixed properly. Now, if you're using um, a different resin, obviously you need to follow the directions on whatever resin you're using. Um, I'm using art resin, so we're following the directions for that. So let me find where I'm going to put this. We'll put it right there. And so I'm going to take my sweet little um, silicone applicator, and we're going to just stir this for three minutes. Like I said, you're going to do it. You're just going to fold it on top of itself. Just stir slowly and uh, gently you just want to blend both of those two pieces or both of those two parts together i can't wait to get the resin on this dark blue it's going to really pop No, Barbara, you're not slow thinking outside the box. I bet it would look really good. Keep in mind when you um, when you resin over wood, it does turn it darker. So keep that in mind. So what it looks like wet is what it would look like with resin on top of that. There's always a replay. So we're just gonna keep stirring. I'm scraping the sides of my container and I'm scraping across the bottom so that we make sure it's nice and mixed. Because what can happen if you've ever like mixed resin and then poured it on your canvas and then came back the next day and it was still sticky, like gooey, that means it wasn't mixed properly or measured properly. So make sure you follow the directions. Don't cheat yourself. Don't think, ah, oh, that's plenty of time. Oh yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm gonna add those after the resin. So we're gonna just keep stirring. <laughs> Losing the clear glass. Okay, I think it would look beautiful, Mickey, but let me tell you what's gonna happen. If you do a dark blue background and then put clear glass, you're not really gonna be able to see the tree. Um, so I would paint the dark blue background and then if you want a clear glass tree, you're, you're gonna need to paint like a silver or a white tree on top of the blue so that it, you'll be able to see the clear glass. Because the clear glass is gonna reflect whatever color is underneath. There is no bad odor. This art resin, what I'm using is a non-hazmat. It's made in the States and is made specifically for um, art projects. It has no VOCs, no BPAs, no uh, COV. So it is um, not smelly, but if you're sensitive to smells, 
then you uh, should definitely use precautions. Um, if you are sensitive to like, you know, rashes or something, you might want to, you know, wear long sleeves, that kind of stuff. Just, you know, be smart about your own self. Mm, I don't know what to ask or search for if I want to buy pieces for the cross. Um, I don't right now sell the glass strips for the cross. Um, I am trying to um, hire somebody to cut glass for me for cross strips. Um, it is still in the works and that will probably only be a benefit of being in, thank you, Catherine. That'll be a member fit of being, a benefit, member fit, benefit of being a member of the Shattered Circle because I won't be able to accommodate everybody. Just a benefit for the people inside my group. So I'm going to start my resin down here at the bottom. I'm just going to use my applicator and I am going to drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. Let's see. Jan, my store is artshattered.com if you're talking about my online store. Drizzle, drizzle. Drizzle. I have to be real careful down here at the bottom because it's kind of close to the edge. And y'all know I don't like resin on the sides of my canvases. So I'm going to have to be really cautious about getting it too close and running over the edge of my canvas. I can already see that this blue is going to be spectacular. So just drizzle it on. Don't you do it, runaway drip. All right, now I'm gonna come and put a little bit on his little halo. I'm gonna come up to the top. And we're gonna get right on our star. I'm gonna hit each piece and let it run down the edges. Make sure it's all covered really nicely so it doesn't move. Now I'm going to take my resin and I'm going to drizzle it around the rest of my canvas. Ooh, what is that? So there's a hair. I do not want that. And I'm just going, I think I'm going to use my hand. Get me scratch first. E -e -e. So I'm just gonna use my hand to kind of move this resin around. Make sure it's on the glass. That really makes the color pop. I don't know if you can tell, because it's kind of hard to see, but the resin, thank you, Bonnie. The resin really does make that blue stand out and I can't wait for you to see the variation of blues in that sky. Let me get a little more resin. Pushing the heart button and angry faces. <laughs> oh, it happens, honey. It's okay. It happens all the time. I usually, when I see it, I always say something like, who's mad? Because that happens all the time. So I'm going to try to get in all those little crevices between my little star bits. And we may use almost all of this. So I mixed an ounce. Probably going to use about three quarters of it. 
So I think if you mixed an ounce and a half, you could do two. Because we're, we're gonna have some left. I don't wanna drown it, because I do have a few other things I could resin. Hey, um, SG? <laughs> Steam gray? Hey, Psst. There's a cross on the table right there. The blue one that's half resined. It's got a little bit of resin on it from where I've been trying to resin it every uh, yeah. time I have a teeny bit left over. Yeah, I'm gonna use the leftover resin on that. Okay. So if you'll set it right here. I'm not putting it on very thick. I'm putting it on just thick enough to cover my canvas and not see canvas texture, okay? So if you put it on super heavy, it's going to roll down the sides and you're going to have uh, resin all, all over the sides. And um, <laughs> that's funny. I see that too, Catherine. So I'm going to run my finger along the edge to make sure I kind of feel like I'm sealing the edge. I'm probably not. Probably just a figment of my imagination. But I do feel like I'm doing that. So I like to kind of run my finger right on that edge. All right. And before I finish that, I'm gonna do one thing. I've got this cross here that I have been putting excess resin on for about three days. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna do one quick little, I'm gonna finish this one up. This has been my, my little piece sitting on my back table. I always have something that needs resin. So if I mix a little bit too much, I just dump it on that one thing. So. Let's, no resin gets wasted. No, no. Oh, there's a hair. Let's find that. Look at there. Get out of there. And voila. I think that's gonna do that. Let me see if there's any more resin left. I didn't want to wait because I did that. Um, I can't really remember if it was yesterday or when, but I waited till after I was done and I forgot and just my resin just hardened up. So while it was in my head, I didn't want to waste my resin. Because sometimes when I get off of here, I get super focused on something else and I'm a lost ball in tall weeds. So let me get that spread there. And I promise we're gonna move on. There, all right, so an ounce, less than an ounce for our six by 12 nativity. Cause I had about a, I don't know, quarter ounce or more to finish that out with, all right. So before we add our beads, I'm gonna hit this with the heat gun just to pop any bubbles and I'm gonna elevate just in case any of the resin down here at the bottom where I had to get really close to the edge, just in case any of that wants to drip, I'm gonna elevate my canvas so that I don't glue my canvas down. Oh, see, I have a drip already. So I'm gonna use Miss Gina's wipes. And I'm gonna wipe that edge off. Where the resin's dripping, because I don't like resin on my edges. And that's just a personal preference, guys. You do you. So it's a good thing I elevated. I'm gonna get this off my fingers. I'm gonna hit this with a heat gun, pop my bubbles. I love the sky. Oh, hang on. The sky looks fantastic with the um, variants of color 
adding that little bit of black really made a difference. And the spattering was a big difference maker as well. So, popping those bubbles. You can come, I'm still popping bubbles for some reason. They're still popping up. All right. Now, I'm going to take some translucent or transparent crystal seed beads. And I'm going to add it. I like my snow effect up here, so I'm not going to add any of that to the sky. But I, what I am going to do is add it to the snow. So I'm just going to dump some in a little baby cup. And I need to get this out of my way before I bump it. And I'm going to add some of this transparent seed bead. They're just like little iridescent beads. I'm going to add it to the bottom so it really sparkles like snow does, especially at night. Gives it that little bit of sparkle that snow has. Not that I have been around a lot of snow. I do live in the south. But we have had a snow day here and there. So we just add a little bit to that. I'm going to use my tool and push some of that back that kind of went crazy. Went where it wanted to go. And we'll wipe that off. And I'm going to show you close up my little snow. So here, the seed beads kind of make the snow sparkle. And see how that turned out the, with that little bit of blue still under there? It still turned out okay. So here is our manger. I'm gonna try to hold it. I know it's sideways, but it's the only way to get the whole thing in there and close up. So cute, I love this. 